Hello there guys, Ellie Taylor Gennaro here, and today I'm bringing you a 3 vs 3 battle for the Teutonic uh, Kingdoms expansion for Medieval 2 Total War. Um, this was a 3v3 that, um, that myself, Swedish Lunchnecht, and Ace of Dave 13 uh, did not too long ago. Uh, Dave actually live commed it, so it is on his channel, so if you want to see it directly in a live com from his perspective, then I'll link it, and of course Swedes, I'll always link his channel. Um, however, I noticed on Dave's channel, because he was live comming it, he had to focus on what he was doing on his side, so basically he caught very little of um, the fight that me and Swedes had. So I think the advantage is, that's the problem with live comming 3v3s, is you quite often focus on what you're trying to do in your particular fight, so um, you don't often catch your allies' work, so I like to catch everyone's work in the fight as much as possible. So um, that's why I decided at the time that I will upload it, but I'll do it as a replay, so I'm not sure what Swedes is going to do, maybe he will, I'm not sure. Um, I decided to play as the Holy Roman Empire, Swedes has gone with Lithuania, and um, Ace Day went with Mongols. The only rules I like to play is on these expansions, are standard game rules, like 6-2 Cav, no, no alleys, and all stuff like that. Um, but I also like to have the rule that everyone has to use factions that apply to the to the expansion. I don't want someone coming onto the Teutonic campaign and then playing as, like, say, um, Spain or Venice or something, because you can just do that in the base game. I want to see the new factions being used. So that's the rules I specify when I go on here. That way it's uh, more varied. So I'm going to just pause quickly before this begins, because it's actually a fairly quick battle. Um, uh, I have three units of Pubby's Crossbowmen up front. And I got a very interesting infantry build. This is a build I would never use in the base game in Medieval 2 for the Holy Roman Empire. I have two units of Zwei Handlers and two units of Forlorn Hope. Um, and then an, of course I have a dismounted Imperial Knight taking up the extra number to make it five infantry in the front line. I would never use these units in my front line in the base game, but that's because the two-handed units suffer a glitch. Um, which constantly, it's like an animation glitch, so when they launch their swords to attack, hit them and they get hit, they stop and they keep starting it over again and they get destroyed, so they're only good when charging. Now the glitch still kind of happens in the kingdoms, but because they've got a huge d boost in defense, and the glitch doesn't happen quite as frequently, um, they're a lot more effective in kingdoms and are usable as frontline infantry, so I thought, you know, this allows me to use some infantry that's not always that particularly useful in the base game, so that's why I'm using them. I also have two more dismounted Imperial Knights, either flanking or support, or helping the care fight, whatever seems to be required. Then I have for my cavalry, I have four units of Imperial Knights. You have to remember that the phenomenal, fantastically useful Teutonic Knights that you could use as the Holy Roman Empire, you obviously can't use now because um, there's a Teutonic Order, so they have them. So basically they're not on the roster in the Teutonic expansion. I have a plain general's bodyguard, and I also have a Raider, which is the gun-armed um, little pistol-wielding unit. Um, I believe that's everything I've got. Swede's army, let's have a look at his. He's got four units of these Latvian crossbowmen, so they should be useful enough. Probably not quite as good as Puppy's crossbowmen, but they will be, they will be useful. Um, then he's got, I believe it is six units, just managed to shiver knights in its front. Two units of uh, some Mogatian, the Axemen. Uh, as I demonst they demonstrate their effectiveness, good charges. Then he's got um, two gear teams chosen. As, you, as I also showed you in the last battle, they're an extremely effective and very good unit. Um, cavalry wise he's got General's Bodyguard, and then he's got four Chivalric Knights. No, sorry, two Chivalric Knights and two Boar, Boar Jirija. Uh, so that's what he's got. Oh, wait a minute. And then he's got a Tartar Lancer over here. Dave's army consists of, I believe it was one, two, three, four, five Mongol heavy infantry. Mongol infantry, that's archers, but they can do a bit of melee work when the time when it's called on. Then he's got four units of dismounted heavy lancers. Uh, and then he's got one, two, three, four, five units of nafatoons, so they'll be dangerous if he uses them right. And then he's got one, two, three Khan's guard, uh, I can see of uh, bodyguard, and then two Mongol heavy archers. All of our opponents, which are uh, directly opposite me, is Telmanar. And in the centre is Frederick Smith. On the far flank is the Iron Price. They are all in command of the Teutonic Order, which means we've got a hell of a fight on our hands because the Teutonic Order is extremely powerful. So, actually, I'm going to keep it paused because I want to outline everyone's army. Let's start with Telmanar's Cav. He's got, let's see, I see two Christ Knights. Then I see a Hellbrew and then two Ritterbruder. Man, those guys are so badass. 
And that is such dangerous cavalry. He hasn't got them upgraded, but you don't really need these guys upgraded. They're awesome as is. Um, the only weakness that I can effectively say that in the Teutonic Order is its cost. The units are expensive. So at 15k, you have to think quite a bit about your build. That's why they haven't got a bunch of Ritter Ritter Cav and like stuff. They all sort of they all have that kind of mixture of Cav because they can't afford them. Um, but the, all their units are super powerful. So um, their only weakness is that they cost a lot of money. So you have to be careful about how, what, how you organise your build. Otherwise, you might be weak in one area of the field. So he has two units of Prussian archers up front, and then he has four units of L Livonian auxiliaries. They are basically Puppy, Puppy's crossbowmen, essentially, for the Teutonic Order, so they'll be as good as mine. Then he's got, let's see, he's got some Sword Brethren, Burg Burgia Pikemen, which is a good combo, Dismantled Ritter Bruder, and they are not actually upgraded either, but they're still absolutely powerful even without them. Two of those, two of the Pikemen, uh, Dismantled Hellbruder, or half brother if I remember that's right and two of those and then another pike then a general's bodyguard so that's Talmanar's army uh, Friedrich Smith's army um, it's pretty typical Friedrich army to be honest um, it's pike heavy um, and missile heavy he's got one two three four units of Livonian auxiliaries and he's got one two three four units of Bugia pikemen um, he's got Let's see. I see General's Bodyguard. I think I think that's... Uh, it's hard to tell. He mixed his units in there. He's got a Hellbruder there, I think it is. Hellbruder, I think he's got one Hellbruder, two Hellbruders, one Ritterbruder Cav, a Nichine-like Cav. Um, and then he's mixed his infantry into it, which makes it hard for me to work out what's going on. I see some Sword Brethren. A couple of those, I think some sort of order light infantry types and a dismounted Ritter Bruder as well. Uh, might be a couple of dismounted Ritter Bruder. Uh, to be honest though, probably going, I know they're, they're expensive, but you probably want to have at least three dismounted Ritter Bruder. And these are some clergymen. To be honest, I know what he was trying to go for here was um, morale boosting, but seriously, they don't seem to, they, in their stats, it doesn't indicate that they have any morale boosting at all. So I don't actually think they're much useful for anything. I don't bother with them. Um, there's the Iron Price. Let's have a look. He's got two units of crossbow militia up the front, two hand gunners, and he's got two Prussian archers. So I wouldn't say his m missile contingent's that great, but he probably was aiming on getting better infantry and cav, which is pretty smart, really, for the Holy Roman, um, for the Teutonic Order, rather. He's got two units of Burgia Pikemen, he's got a mounted crossbowmen, but he's also managed to achieve four Ritter Bruder cav, and that will make a big difference. That's a, that's a big, they're a powerful cabin. He's also got one, two, three, four Ritter Bruder infantry and two Hellbruder. So he's actually gone heavy. Oh, he's also a general's body case. I'm very heavy in the infantry and cavalry department. Um, and that's actually very, the right thinking for the Teutonic Order because that's where they're good. The missiles are acceptable, but um, to be honest, I think, um, I think the others probably probably should have they should have probably gone more in that way and to be honest if I was them I would have done a more rush centric build for them um, I know because I quite regularly rush but uh, maybe only one or two missiles each just enough to fix because they their the heavy infantry heavy cav is so powerful that you can rely on them to achieve so much so anyway let us begin the battle begins on my side and I'm pretty much sure on all of our sides just to look a wee bit of a missile duel leave Dave moves up now. I'm going to try and focus more on me and Swedes because Dave got almost all his own fight in his video so um, you can go look at it from his perspective if you like. Um, I will link that particular video into his channel uh, but he basically got none of our fight in the video because he just he was focusing on trying to control his own side of the field so he couldn't really come look at our side so this way I can get more of the fight so basically just opening up now it's important with crossbowmen that they're always up the front because that way they don't have to fire over the heads and arcs, and that's so much better. Now here I did a move um, in an attempt to get rid of these um, Prussian archers, because I didn't really want to be in a missile duel where I was up against uh, 6 to 3, um, and I knew that my I wouldn't be able to get it as um, Livonian auxiliaries very easily, so I sent my Raider in to get rid of this uh, Prussian archer. So, get a few shots off, 
uh, and then I just charge it in because it's quite capable in melee. However, this probably wasn't the best move because um, he's just going to concentrate fire here. Now I decided to carry on, try and get rid of this one as well. Um, but I noticed my guys are not getting through there very quickly. They're getting a bit stuck, um, which is frustrating. So even though I would like to have carried on, got rid of this one. This unit's just not like I'm. This time I was bad, telling it to quickly rush through there, but it didn't go right. So I decided to disengage. So while I got rid of his Prussian archer, it probably really wasn't all that great a move on my part, to be honest. Um, Rate is a pretty expensive unit, but it's still enough left for them to be effective. There's still ten left, and I got rid of one of his units. So here, um, Telmina um, came out onto our flank with his cav, and at this stage, um, Dave's just going to fix and hold. Uh, he's skirmishing up a bit, but again, I'm probably not going to focus too much on his end because he did basically get all of his own end in his particular fight. So I'll try, I will try and get everywhere, but it's pretty quick for this 3v3, so it won't be able to do it very easily. So um, we see that Telmina sent his cab quite far away from anything he had in support. So we thought here's an opportunity for us to, to comp me and Swedes to combine, couple his cab with all of my cab and destroy Telmina's cab. And that'll destroy an extremely powerful wing of his army, which he can't really afford to be losing. Um, but if he's going to make that kind of move, then we're not really going to waste that opportunity. Now I decided to pull my general back just in case he decided to send his general around and be a bit of a nuisance. Just in case. Um, However, we decide, he decides to take the fight, so our guys are going to get our lances down. It's going to be a cavalry, cavalry showdown here. Now, his Ritter Bruder are going to be better Cav. Uh, however, his Christ Knights and Hell Bruder are, are capable. Our guys are capable of fighting, but um, the advantage is though we've got numbers in the vicinity, so we can get um, we can get surround. And I'm going to put my Raiders on a flank here and shoot into them, which is really good for dropping morale. Now he. Breaks away here, so I have to use my general's bodyguard. Now my bodyguard will destroy that Christ Knight pretty easily. And now I've got an encirclement over here. Um, now I decided to just allow these Ritter Brooders to stay in this fight. And interestingly enough, my Imperial Knights are holding out quite well, which is pretty impressive, because Ritter Brooders are a lot better. But if I destroy that Christ Knight, which will be easily destroyed, I can then turn around and encircle the Ritter Brooder much quicker. Because they will win their fights if this is allowed to persist on and on for too long. So as you can see, these guys are just dropping, because this gunfire coming straight in at them at point blank and that routes them as well because these um Borgia Regia will get destroyed by Ritter Bruder very easily but because I was able to um we had numbers in the area we were able to encircle them and destroy Telemonar's army um his cavalry rather and once he loses his cavalry it's a big threat to him but you should never um consider Telmanar out of the game just because he's lost a major component even though this is probably the most important component of a medieval army or medieval two army is the cavalry um, I think this Hellbrooder over here regrouped I don't know whether he was aware of it at this stage because it's just sitting there so he might not have noticed it just yet but it's a little, little too little too late really because this cavalry has been destroyed basically um, but that's still Telmanar so he can still be dangerous if we're not careful now I'll try and catch this fight these guys do, do rush up here um now this is what I thought in the fight was um, they executed what I thought was a wrong use of the Teutonic Quarter. They should have just rushed straight away. And what they should have done was they should have concentrated their strike against Dave. Because this Mongol army would break under the Teutonic army strike. Because, you know, even though Khan's guard are good, Ritter Bruder are actually better. Um, and they have numbers and cav mass, so that they could do is use a little bit of Fredericks just to stall me and Swedes alongside Telmanar, and then the rest of Fredericks and Iron Price's army could have destroyed, um, could have completely destroyed the uh, Mongol army. The only thing they had to worry about were Nafatoons, and they could have used their missiles to keep busy with those. Over this flank, um, it's roughly around this stage that Telmanar also attacks. Uh, I use my peasants to try and absorb the charge so that I can then in turn use my heavy infantry on a counter charge because you have to remember um, I, could, I do best on a charge and what I want to do is for his pikes to slip behind his infantry which actually does work out alright because if I charge pikes I'll lose my, my brutal charge so I'm making sure I'm charging um, unit, sword units if possible now he does get his Ritter Brutus into some of my uh, puppies crossbow in here which actually causes them to chain route which was a bit of a nuisance but Got lots of my cav left and Swedes, some of the Swedes cav is nearby. Swedes are just playing support, helping whoever he needs. Um, they are smart to target Dave like this, because it is going to destroy him. Is what they should is what they should have done, but I think they should have done it sooner and with a better job of stalling me and Swedes. Um, but as you can see over here, um, we get plenty of flank charges, but Telmanar is not going to make this easy. And because because Teutonic infantry is so strong, so powerful, and so reliable. Um, 
it's going to take a hell of a lot of charging just to get it through. So they, they have um, some pretty massive advantages. Over here, one of my dismantled Imperial Knights, I completely forgot about it. I didn't, I, I didn't know what I was doing there. Here I see um, these guys, but he did spot it, but he doesn't get his pikes down, so I was very fortunate there that he did not get his pikes down. So I could get out of it, though, before he can get him down. Um, but uh, because he's getting encircled and there is numbers and mass on him, and cab strikes repeatedly charging in, it's, uh, it is allowing us to beat him, but you can just see how long these Teutonic troops are lasting, under probably like six, seven charges. I mean, they're supremely powerful infantry, and this is why I thought they should have rushed and did it much sooner. Over here, as you can see, when they combined their attack against Dave, um, they cleaned him up pretty quickly, but he did a very good job of stalling out two people all at once. Um, so he's just trying to focus on helping me and Dave, so it's kind of putting, like, death fighting on two areas of the field, so he's probably making a few micro errors. It's pretty easy to do in those situations. Um, I suspect any Naffa tunes that were here would have been making a big difference to this fight, because these Teutonic units would just otherwise rip straight through all the Mongol armies, because the Mongols are not really as strong as they should be. In, the, in this game or in the base game. Uh, we finally get rid of Talamanar's forces. This just leaves basically me and Swedes left because the Mongols have been destroyed. So, I mean, Price has still got a large number of forces left. Um, and uh, Friedrich Smith still got some decent numbers left as well. Friedrich just made a nice charge here against that isolated Imperial Knight that I forgot about. But Swedes is going to, like, block him, and then I'm going to get a flank charge with my um, Imperial Knights, and we should be able to destroy that Hellbrooder. But, I mean, I thought, I mean, to be, be, to be honest, I, I think, like, Teutonic War is extremely powerful and an aggressive faction. Um, it's got some decent missiles. You can miss the skirmish with it, but the thing is, it's the cost of a lot of the units. If you're going for a large missile armor, you're really compromising its greatest strength, which is its cavalry and its infantry. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to be getting in... Um, aggressive with them. I think it's playing their strength that way. Certain factions play in different ways and the Teutonic Order plays aggressive cavalry and infantry strikes. As you can see, here comes a mass strike by Price um, into these melee units. And as you can see, he's, he did very, very well in there. Um, I think, to be honest, um, Frederick Smith's army just lacked that infantry, that heavy infantry core that the Teutonic... He had a couple, but he probably should have had more because the Teutonic Order is best used when it's just heavy infantry, heavy cav, and, you know, the pikes are effective, don't get me wrong, they're good mixed with the um, Ritter Bruder, but the problem is um, that it's cost, you know, if you're going to buy, you know, you're going to buy a Ritter Bruder and pikes to get, you know, and, and then get the cav and all that, it, it's, it's the cost that's their weakness. So here I decided to make some charges, however, his own uh, units get in the way there, um, and it kind of routes this unit because it's shaken and it's tired and his actual archer unit got in the way before I could do enough damage. Over here, I use my general's bodyguard to charge this dismounted Ritter Bruder, but I mean, that, that is tough as nails, this Ritter Bruder. They, they will not route easily. Um, and that, this just basically means that um, a couple of my units route, but Swede's army is still in fairly good shape. But Price does a pretty nice job of just keep, really har keeps harassing him with the Cav. Um, but they're pretty weakened. Dave did do a very nice job. I would assume those Naffa tunes were the responsibility for that because that Mongol army really stands no chance otherwise against the uh, Teutonic Order and it's just not strong enough. Um, so here I decided to just charge this pike unit because I can use my general bodyguard to get rid of it. Um, I've got my two handers into a charge as Ritter Bruder, but they're pretty. They're like, two handers are kind of more like they'll do good for one fight, but. Once they have to do too many fights, they're going to lose. Whereas the Ritter Bruder are so heavy and elite that they'll just be able to hold it going. So they will do very, very well. Um, as you can see, um, they're coming in here. Though these are Hell Bruders mostly. A couple of Ritter Bruder. And they'll be strong. They'll do do quite a bit of damage. But me and Swedes can finish this up. I mean, we, we didn't even really need to communicate very much. We've been doing the, we've been doing a lot of battles together for a long time now. So we just know what we're doing. Um... So, I mean, these Ritter Bruder and Ritter Bruder Cam and everything are starting to win over here, even against Guillotine's Chosen. Um, but there are units coming onto the flank, and there's some cavalry left, I think. As you can see, my two-handers route right there. This is basically what two-handers are really like a one-fight unit. And if they're made to fight too much longer than that, they will potentially route. At least some of Telmanar's regroup units are in the back there. 
but I've got my Imperial Knights which are in reserve and I put them onto the flank here to help Swedes in the centre um, and I've got my General's Bodyguard coming in get some charges into the back of these Ritter Brood here because otherwise they'll break through Swedes troops most likely um, but that should change the um, shape of that fight there just with a good cab charge um, there's one or two bits of Mongol units left, but very, very little. I guess my Imperial Knights come in here also to help Swedes as he's holding up. Someone admits defeat then. I'm not sure which one of them it was. Probably, I think it was Price. Um, and these units are... Of, actually, no, it might have been Frederick Smith. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, we basically finished it up here, and they are going to rout. Um, it was a very fun game. Um, I advise you, if you want to see what happened more on Dave's side. I will link the very battle that he actually has of this. It's a live com version. Um, and he, he literally fought basically, because he basically only caught his own side of the fight. So I figured I would deliberately work on me and Swede's side of the fight so we could cover the side that he got very little of. And then you can go look at his side of it if you want to catch his part of it. Um, it, was a, it was a really enjoyable fight. And remember guys, um, I love playing the the kingdoms, any of them, you know. Although I must, I can't use Americas at the moment because I've got my stainless steel um, linked in over that one. So, um, but Britannia, Crusades, and Teutonic, you know, if you ever want to play them, guys, or by your invasion of Rome, total Alexander, any of that, message me, you know, because I love playing those ones. I really do, and so does Swedes, and he would be happy to play it as well um, because we just, we just, we're always looking for battles for them, but no one even wants to do it. Today we claim victory for the empire was the Empire. Of course, I was using my favourite base game faction, the Holy Roman Empire, although the Teutonic Order is even cooler than the Holy Roman Empire, if such a thing is possible. So there you go. Um, only an average victory, but as you can see, we all had very similar kill counts. 792 for me, but I do have the most captures, taking me up to one, 160 there, so it takes me up over 900. Swedes with 826, 103 captures, and then Dave with 903, taking the crown there, so very well done to him, with 74 captures. Uh, he was basically completely destroyed, and I wasn't far short of it either. Um, but Swedes still had some decent numbers left. As you look at these guys, Telmanar, Frederick Smith, and Iron Price all got fairly similar amounts. Um, Iron Price may have got the smallest count, but as you can see, got by far the most captures, and that always counts as well. Um, but very similar for these guys. Um, I felt they hung around in the missile fight for far too long. They should have got more aggressive sooner because that's where the Teutonic Order is at its best. And I, what I would have done, as I suggested there, is I would have used... Um, Frederick Smith could have sent just a couple of units to help Talmanar hold me and Swedes up. It would have worked because the Teutonic Order... As you can see how well Talmanar did holding me and Swede, Swedes up there. They're a hell of a strong, strong units with really good morale. And then um, Frederick Smith and Iron Price could just totally uh, gang up on Dave, which is what they did, but they just did it too slow. Um, and Dave, they, I, I'm not really sure how, how it went off heart by how it went on his end of the fight, but I'm pretty sure his Nafatoons would have been what sold that victory for him. If they'd gotten rid of those, that Mongol army would have just been shredded because the Teutonic Order is actually a lot stronger. Like, the Khan's Guard's a great, great cav unit, but the Ritterbrood is still better. And then combine that with the Great Infantry, it does mean that the um, Teutonic Order is better. So if we look at my stats here, my General's Body got 144 kills, 41 captures. Pyronite, 60, 52. Uh, these two didn't do quite so well, 35 and 26. These Y Handlers, 49, 66. It's pretty good for them against Ritter Bruder. I was pretty pleased that the 41 Hope, 32, 23. And the Imperial Knights, one of them got 58. That Raider got 44. It was very really helpful in that fight. And the Crossbowmen actually did really well, 69, 62, and 56. They were very handy. So um, I was pretty pleased with that. It was a good team effort. Um, and I'll, of course, link those guys' channels. Of course, Talmanar has a channel as well. I must remember to link him as well. So check those um, Swedes, Dave, and Talmanar's channel. And I'll, I'll link the particular battle from Dave's perspective so you can catch his side of the fight if you're interested. Um, and you can make up your own mind about how things went there. So good game to those six guys, or five guys, rather. I enjoyed it. Thanks for playing, guys. And again, guys, if you're interested in playing Kingdoms, leave a message. You can message me on Steam if you've got my Steam account. My Steam account is the same as my YouTube name. You can just type it on Steam and you'll find me. A Roman centurion dude with a big whitish looking shield and so on and so forth. Now, you can leave a comment on the comment section because um, it's always fun to play these Kingdoms and I enjoy it very much. So do consider it, guys. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon next time.